there is nothing like the smell of fresh chamomile. And there's also nothing like understanding how to plant in the garden. I've made my fair share of mistakes trying to transplant everything under the sun. And let's just say some of it hasn't gone that well. So in this video, Jacques and I are gonna give you nine crops that these days we always direct sow. The first plant we're going to be talking about today is a summer classic. It is something we all look forward to every single year. And it comes in a couple different varieties, whether it's sweet, flint, or dent, and that is corn. The cool thing about this plant is that it could be used in many different ways. Sweet corn can be eaten fresh, it could be cooked, and then eaten right off the cob. And of course, you can make tortilla and popcorn out of the other varieties, so it's a very cool plant to have in your garden. Now, you can technically transplant this plant, it's totally fine, but the problem that you run into when you transplant corn is that it could oftentimes blow over. When it actually gets broken off and planted directly in the ground, you get a much better root development system. The corn is not going to blow over and it's just generally going to be producing better for you. At least that's been my experience. When I have transplanted corn in the past, I ended up having to tie it up and support it because it actually blew over in the wind. Now, the other thing I quickly want to mention here about corn is if you look at a spot like this, this is roughly a four by eight foot section in my garden. This is ideal for planting corn. You don't want to plant corn in a straight line or in a skinny bed because it needs wind to pollinate. So by planting it in a nice chunky block like this and directly going into the ground, you're going to have a stable plant that doesn't blow over in the wind. You're gonna have great pollination because you have them nice and close together in a grid and you're going to get an absolutely delicious harvest of corn. This variety here is Martian Jewels and I am going to be growing it this year because it can be eaten sweet or it could be saved and processed to be used in other methods. So corn, you can technically transplant it, but we would always recommend direct sowing so you get a nice sturdy plant. There is a plant that I absolutely love so much so that not only have I grown one as big as a manhole, I have also eaten the entire head of one. And yes, of course, I am talking about the one right next to me, which would be the sunflower. So the reason that I like to direct sow these bad boys is because, first of all, after you plant one and let it grow out and maybe you don't harvest it for a cut flower and you let the birds eat it and they kind of spread the seeds around, it's just gonna direct sow itself. To be honest with you, a lot of the ones that are growing around my garden this season, I did not even plant. But the thing with sunflowers is that it doesn't like transplanting in a very specific way because there's a very sensitive taproot on sunflowers that when transplanted tends to result in a shorter sunflower, even if it's the exact same variety. So if you take a look at this one here, this is the mammoth sunflower, which as the name implies, gets very, very tall. If I was to transplant this versus direct sow it, the direct sown one 99 times out of 100 would actually be a taller plant. So if you want a vigorous and full sunflower, which we all do, I really recommend and direct sowing it. If you're very, very sad about how long it might take to germinate, there's two things you can do. One would be to soak in water overnight, then plant. Or the second, I've shown you this tip a few times, is to just snip the very, very end of the sunflower seed. Just a tiny little bit allows that water to get in there when you plant it directly in the ground. When it comes to snacking in the garden, I have a very clear winner, and it actually comes in many different forms, much like the corn. And I am talking today about peas. Now the cool thing about peas is that there's snow peas, there's snap peas, there's shelling peas, which in my opinion is the most underrated of all the peas. But today we're going to be planting some sugar snap peas. Now the cool thing about peas is that they don't get very big and you could plant them very densely. The reason why you generally don't want to transplant them is because they have very weak roots. A lot of people have actually even done something called the gutter transplant method where you actually get a rain gutter, fill it with a little bit of soil, fill it with peas and then you kind of just slide the entire plant of peas into the ground so you don't mess with the roots at all. But even easier, you could just direct sow them and skip that whole process. So what I like to do is find a section of my garden that has a fence, like this hardware cloth fence right here. I'll take a tool like this cobra head and it's very simple. All you have to do is take that, dig yourself a nice, pretty healthy furrow here, right along the fence that you're going to be putting them in. And then simply take your peas, whichever one you're growing. If you haven't tried growing shelling peas, I highly encourage you guys to try it. They're literally like candy. None of them even make it into my house because we eat them all off the plant directly. Now when it comes to growing peas, if you have had trouble in the past getting them to actually germinate, what you can do is soak them overnight in a cup of water and then they'll be much more likely to germ. Now the soil as you could see is quite dark because we've been getting a lot of rains here. So all I'm going to do is drop the peas in, 
I'm not going to worry about spacing at all. You could literally put these like an inch apart and they'll do just fine. I'm gonna go with something like two inches across the board here and simply fill in this furrow. So I'm gonna go all the way down the line. If you have a couple extra peas at the end, just throw them in. It's not a big deal. They can be planted very tightly. And then all I'm gonna do is simply cover them up. That's all you have to do when it comes to direct sowing peas. They grow very easily, very readily after that and they don't last for very long. So the cool thing is, is that once you get a couple of harvests and it starts to get hot, the peas will come out and you'll have more space in your garden to plant out all those delicious summer vegetables. Many years ago in my small urban front yard garden where I had about 20 square feet of space, I tried to transplant this next crop and it was a catastrophic failure and a waste of my time and my life essence. So these days I always direct sow my carrots. So carrots, obviously a root crop. You eat the tap root of the plant. In fact, I have a row of them right here that have been very profitable for me this year. My farmer's market begins today because I've got quite the bumper crop. But when you grow carrots, you really don't want to disturb this. They like a nice sort of loose, almost sandy loam type of soil. So transplanting is just going to disturb that and cause you all sorts of problems. So this is the way that I planted this row that I just harvested from. I took a trowel, much like this one, and you draw a very simple furrow in the ground. Nothing too crazy here. And then grab your seed pack. This variety is called Rainbow. The one I planted is called Danvers 126. If you want like a really classic variety, the Danvers is the one to go with. I give it a light crease and then I just tap my fingers here and let the carrots drop out, ideally spacing them every couple inches, but you're never gonna get that right when you grow the carrots like this. And then you cover that up just like that and then put something on top. You can put like a board, you can put some burlap, you can put some cardboard on for a couple weeks. That'll keep this nice and moist. That's the biggest issue with carrots. It takes about 10 to 14 days for them to start to sprout. And if you don't keep them nice and moist during that time, they'll die and you'll get this weird patchiness to the carrots that you don't want. And so what'll happen at this point is they'll start to sprout up and you really want to thin them out to about one every two inches or so. In fact, that's exactly what I did over here. And you can see that I've got this really nice spacing between my carrots so that I've got this really beautiful carrot, just like this and this. And then here's one that I didn't thin out and take a look at that. It was growing literally right next to this big one sandwiched between those two. So carrots just don't want to be transplanted. Don't try it and make your life easier with a couple of these direct sow tips. And one more pro tip, you can actually store these in sand and they'll last up to six months outside of a refrigerator. When it comes to trying to get some amount of protein growing in your garden, it can be quite challenging because most vegetables just simply don't have that much. But there is one plant and that is the humble bean. Beans come in many different flavors, many different shapes and sizes, and specifically they're either really bush beans or pole beans. So today we're going to be talking about pole beans because I think a lot of people don't understand exactly how they grow. When you do want to grow a pole bean, it's very easy to direct seed them because you could put them right up on the trellis that you're going to grow them on, or actually you could even plant them alongside your corn to set up a three sisters garden, which is really quite a lot of fun. Now, the thing that I wanted to mention about beans is that if you take a look at this one right here, this is a established pole bean. What happens is that it wraps around the structure that it's growing on. Now, the way that it wraps is actually by wrapping if you're looking right at the structure to the right. So you can see here it's twisting behind around the pole. That is how it's always going to wrap around any structure you set it up on. The main thing I wanted to call out though is if you are planting beans on a trellis, you don't want to plant it somewhere where it doesn't have a vertical section to climb. So this trellis has these horizontal gaps. If I were to put the bean straight down the middle, it couldn't climb up that because it doesn't have tendrils. The way it climbs is it physically wraps around the structure and that is how it's held in place. So make sure you have a nice vertical structure for the beans to climb on. Other than that, all you have to really do is take your beans, come down to the base. So right here I have a nice vertical line. I'm going to take my bean and just put it simply at the base under the ground right there. Now the other thing I want to mention is that while you can of course transplant beans, me and Kevin ran an experiment last year where we did one section of the garden where we transplanted beans and then we immediately at the same time direct sowed the exact same varieties next to them. What happened was that the transplanted beans actually stagnated for a little bit and by the time they started growing, the direct sowed ones actually caught up and surpassed the transplanted beans. So there's nothing to say you can't do either one, but if you have the space already for it, it's always better to just direct sow your beans. They're always going to catch up to those ones that were transplanted. I think I have a new nickname and I'm giving it to myself and it would be 
the flower father because this year is by far the year I've grown the most flowers and wildflowers. So in this particular area, I have this kind of smiling look to this border planting where there's only wildflowers, some sunflowers, but a bunch of other stuff as well. And then my vegetable garden that's growing in ground is kind of behind it. So I'm bringing a lot of life, a lot of color, a lot of beauty, a lot of insect and bug activity to this area, which of course is going to benefit my vegetable garden, but I do that by direct sowing and not transplanting. So a pollinator mix or a wildflower mix, to me, there's no point in trying to transplant it when you can just take a pack like this, clear out a bed, and just do a little bit of that. Remember that guy, Salt Bay, dropping salt on the steak? I think he got canceled or something, but either way, you can just do this, cover it up, water it in, and this is what will result. And it is such a rewarding thing. I don't know why it took me so many years to figure this out. Some plants are just simply not worth transplanting. And that's because they grow so fast that by the time you grow it as a transplant, you might as well have just put it in the ground because it's going to be ready in just a few weeks. In this case, I am talking about the radish. Now I have a love-hate relationship with radishes. They're not something where I'm ever like, oh man, I wish I had a radish right now. It would be so delicious. But I am starting to respect them. Ever since somebody told me that you should eat your radish with a little bit of salt, maybe even try baking it and taste like a potato, definitely not a potato, but it did taste better. So I am trying to grow a little bit more radishes so I can experience them a little bit better. They are good on salads, I guess, and I do like them pickled. So what I'm going to do here, just take a nice little handful of radish seeds. The cool thing about radish seeds is that they're actually really big for such a fast growing plant. I don't know why that surprises me, but I'm going to simply lay down a sprinkle right on the surface here, right along my drip lines. And the thing is, is like the French breakfast radish, which is what I'm sowing right here, is ready in something like 28 days. So why would you bother transplanting it when you could just put it straight in your garden and get ready to harvest it in just a matter of a few weeks? All we're going to do is place that down. So I've placed all my seed and now I have some extra. All I'm going to do is do that. Just let them sprinkle wherever they grow. They're gonna be ready so fast, I don't care whatsoever if they take up any space. So all I'm going to do for the seeds that I intentionally planted is simply press them into the soil, lightly bury them, and like I said, in just about a month, I'm going to be harvesting radishes straight out of this bed, and then I just have to figure out how to eat them. This next one is a summer classic, one that I've grown a few seasons in a row now to great success and also extreme satisfaction, whether you're eating it straight out of the field or you're gonna chill it, maybe put it into a smoothie. Of course, I'm talking about a watermelon, and this also would apply to any melon that you are growing because you plant them in a very specific way and they don't really like to be disturbed once they're planted. So roots that don't wanna be disturbed, you should probably direct so, right? Put it right in the place that it's gonna be until it gets harvested. And the way to do that is the following. So take a trowel of some kind, you can make a mound either by doing what I'm about to do, by hilling some up yourself, or just taking some soil from another area and dropping it right here. But I'm just going to pull a bit of soil together here, plant it on a mound, and you wanna plant this out. Hmm, maybe soil temperatures need to be 70 to 90-ish degrees, air temperatures somewhere in that same range. So I've got this nice mound here, and then what I do is I just punch the middle just a touch create a slight depression right here. And I'll do two to four seeds per mound. This one's Crimson Sweet, great variety. Smallish seeds though. And in we go, one, two, three, four. And then I'll steal a little bit of extra soil, cover that up, press that down. You give this a nice water in. And then if you were to plant even more watermelon, you'd space these mounds out about four to six feet apart. So I could put one here and I could put one right over there and right up there because these guys sprawl like crazy. So plants in general that don't like to be disturbed, just put them where they're gonna be and this technique works really, really well. The last pick for you guys today is maybe a little bit less conventional because classically, most people always transplant this, but I'm here to tell you that I am not going to be transplanting it anymore and that is actually the cucumber and I'll tell you exactly why. When it comes to growing cucumbers, they actually have very sensitive roots. So what tends to happen is you'll take your cucumber transplant, put it in the garden, and it'll just kind of sit there for a few days, maybe even a week or two before it even starts growing. Meanwhile, if you direct seed your cucumbers, which I'm about to show you how to do right on this A-frame trellis, then you don't have that problem. By the time this catches up to that transplant, it's going to far exceed it. So here's the deal. If you need to plant out your garden, you need to figure out spacing and you don't have the time, then go ahead and do your transplant. But when you do, 
do it very carefully and do not disturb the roots. Now, if you want to avoid that altogether, then I highly encourage that you just direct seed them. So what I'm going to be doing here is using this two by four foot in total uh, distance on this trellis. I'm going to be direct seeding it so that they're about a foot apart. Now I am going to be growing a pickling cucumber, which I'm very excited for, because this year I intend to grow many more pickles than I've ever grown before. Now when it comes to cucumber spacing, if you're growing on a trellis like this, you could get away with just a foot apart between each plant. So what I'm going to do is take two seeds, because when you're direct seeding, you never know if they're actually going to come up or not, or maybe one's going to get munched on by a pest. So I'm going to come down here at the base, right underneath one of these little legs here. I'm going to take my two seeds, put it in the ground, press it into the soil, just like that. And then I'm going to come about a foot away so I'm going to just take another step in from the other side and put another two seeds right there. The really cool thing about growing cucumbers on an A-frame trellis like this is that the plant will climb to the top and then you can start draping it over. By that point, the plant is now going to be four or five feet long. It's going to be nearing the end of its lifespan. And you could just take some more cucumber seeds, direct seed the other side, and start a new succession of cucumbers. By the time that one starts growing, this one will be spent and you could remove it, let that plant climb over to the other side, and just back and forth, back and forth, direct sow cucumbers on either side until your season is over. Now, if you want to grow cucumbers in containers, we have a great video for you guys right here to check out. And that's it for this video. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.